Hello, I'm Mark. This is uh, my channel. I make videos about stuff that's important to me and whatever. So what happened was I said that I was going to make a um, video about Alcoholics Anonymous. Now, what is Alcoholics Anonymous? Well, it's a group. It's an organization designed to help alcoholics stop drinking and become sober. Okay, one of the key components of Alcoholics Anonymous is what they call the Big Book, or the Bible, as they call it. This is one copy of the Big Book. Of course, you can't really see it too well because of the cover. Now, what happened is <coughs> normally these things are like ten, ten. 10 to 15 dollars I got mines for like two found it online for two bucks and guess what no matter what and what happens is it's like 365 pages or something like that uh, 400 some pages five some 500 some pages and what happens is the first 164 pages is the program of Alcoholics Anonymous which never changed and other, other than that is stories which changes every now and then this thing was from Serenity Corner. As you see, I bought it used, so I'm like, why should I spend ten bucks when I can get it for like two? And I got it for two, so that's good. <clears throat> now, the thing about alcohol is anonymous. There's lots of things about it, and the thing is, is that before I get before I talk about it, let me explain how I figured this out. I got my second DUI. <clears throat> the judge says, Art, you're going to take have two years probation. During that time, you have to get substance abuse counseling, and you go to go to AA twice a week. Of course, I was fighting the AA thing because I'm like, I'm not an alcoholic. But because of the fact that I got busted for a DUI, they want to paint you as an alcoholic or a person with a problem with alcohol. So either you have no fucking clue what's going on or... You just don't give a damn. So they send you there. Now, thing is that now what now what happened is is that Alcoholics Anonymous is a very large organization around the world. And it's kind of complicated and simple at the same time. So I'm gonna try to simplify these a little bit. Now what happens is it was created by it was created in like 1935 or something like that by a Christian group. Now remember, I said Christian group. So what happened is during that time was prohibition and lots of alcohol and supposedly alcoholism was running rampant during that time. Now, here's a problem. How can you explain the idea of sobriety? And you're a Christian group. So what happened is they had the idea that let's not use let's not use religious. Let's call it something different. So that way it's more acceptable to people. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> so what happened is, like, for example, if you're religious, you heard about the Ten Commandments. They have the Ten Steps, which I'll go over. And I'll explain a little bit of them. One, you admitted that your power is over alcohol and your life's become unmanageable. Basically because you got a DUI or you're losing your family lost your job because of alcohol abuse and stuff like that your life is unmanageable you can't survive two came to leave a power greater than yourselves can restore us to sanity okay that means something that beyond yourself something beyond you that you can believe in to help you restore your sanity three made a decision turning our will and lives over to the god as we understood him now remember this is about they call this instead of saying god now what happened is they use god as a comparison, but as a god, what they call it, a god of your understanding, which means is a higher power of your understanding. That means if you want to say God is my higher power, fine. If you want to say Satan is your higher power, fine. The desk in the corner is your higher power, so be it. Okay. For make a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Basically, you re-examine your life, and you you re-examine your life, and you um. Figure out what's wrong with you. Admit it to God and ourselves and to none of him be the exact nature of our wrongs. That's when the restitution, like all the people you wrong. I mean, remember that show, uh, 
Earl something. Earl, my name is Earl, something like that. And his goal is to everybody he harmed, he has to make amends. That's exactly what that is. Uh, it's number six. We're entirely ready to have God remove all of our defects of character. Seven, humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Made a list of all persons we have harmed and be willing to make amends to them all. It's almost the same thing. Make direct demands to such people whenever possible to do something to, with injuring them others. Most of these steps are kind of like the same thing. Continue to take personal inventory and when you're prompt, properly admit it. Basically, you admit you're wrong. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him. Praying for knowledge of His will and the power to carry it out. And 12, having a spiritual record and the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to other alcoholics. In other words, once you get your sets, once you get your shit settled, you go to someone else and explain it to them. <coughs> and that's what out. So what happens? That's the 12 steps in a nutshell. So what happens is now. There's also some traditions which I'll go over a little bit. Okay. Uh, one, our common welfare should come first. Personal recovery depends on AA unity. In other words, my welfare comes first, but we all together. For our group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority, a loving guy. You may express himself in all our group conscious. Our leaders, our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. That means the people who run AA are not actual leaders. They're like advisors. But I'm pretty sure some AA groups, you got a leader. Three, the only requirement is a desire to stop drinking. Okay, fine. Each group should be autonomous, except in matters affecting other groups or AA as a whole. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky. The big strength about AA and the weakness is the same thing. They're autonomous. That means every group operates on its own will. Just like how every family governs their own selves think of it that way so that means the group I belong to no one can tell our group what to do we can't tell another group what to do you can offer suggestions but it's up to them to do it each group has but one primary purpose to carry his message to alcoholics still suffers an AA group ought never to endorse finance or lend the AA name to any related facility or outside enterprise. Less problems with money, property, and prestige divert us as a primary purpose. In other words, you don't promote it. Every other group will be fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions. So this is another thing. Just like in you know, some religious organizations, you tithe, you give to the church, you give to your group, you give money to your group, so that way the group... You give your money to the group so that way your group can operate. They buy coffee, cookies, and prizes or whatever. <laughs> Alcohols may remember a name not a non-professional, but our service centers may employ special workers. Basically, there's no skilled people there. No advisors or no big leaders or kind of like that. Nine a is such an ought to be organized, but we may create service boards or committees directly responsible to those they serve. In other words, it's a loosely based organization. AA has no opinion on outside issues, hence the AA name ought never be drawn to public controversy. In other words, you don't really promote that you're an AA. <coughs> you're not supposed to promote that I'm an AA. You're not supposed to. Our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. We need to always maintain personal and amenity of the press, the radio, and the films. And just like the same thing. You don't promote it. Twelve, and an amenity is the spiritual foundation of all of our traditions, forever reminding us to take principles, poor personalities. Now, here's the thing about an amenity. Basically, what that means is that they don't tell anyone that you're part of AA. They don't tell anyone that you're part of AA. But the courts will force you to have paperwork to say you was an AA. So basically, <clears throat> you have to go to a group that will sign paperwork, which basically breaks their tradition. Otherwise, they won't get business. So like, for example, AA. I get sent to AA. 
I have paperwork to sign. I went to a different AA group. They said we don't sign paperwork. Why? Because that group don't sign paperwork. So what happened? I went to my I went to a couple groups that don't sign paperwork. So what happened was my probation officer was complaining about me going to the same group all the time. And the funny thing was is that I said I went to other groups. They said don't sign paperwork. And they said, you know what he said? Keep going to the one that signs paperwork. And I said, well, what about the uh, what about the uh, anonymity that they don't tell people that you're part of AA? The court says we don't care. <coughs> Pretty funny. Let that digest for a little bit. So what happens is, is that you have to go to AA. They force you to go to AA. They want you to have paperwork signed that say you're a part of AA, but it's against their principles. Because what happens years ago, the AA petition, of course, said we can help these people. And of course, it's sure, why not? And they have a working relationship. We'll send you guys to AA. And as long as they prove that, as long as we have proof that you went to AA, Everything's fine. And the thing is, AA people are like, you know what? If this, you know, the thing is, some groups that don't sign paperwork, they're like, well, if they don't get signed, they don't show up. And that's why some groups fail. Now, here's the thing. Number one, I'm not an alcoholic. I was just sent there by the courts. <coughs> now, here's the thing. Personally, I heard the good stuff of AA and I heard the bad stuff. I heard about how AA is a cult, and it kind of says it here in a way, but it doesn't say it's a cult, but it says that you'll show interest in people like-minded yourself. So, in other words, people who are alcoholics, you tend to go to meet, like some people go to five to six meetings a week. So, instead of going to visit their family, they'll go to a meeting, meet up with them, instead of their own family members or friends. Some don't. So, but the thing is, is that, in my opinion, your experience in AA will depend upon the group that you go to. And some groups are very militant, and some groups are very lax. The group I go to is very lax. It's an open group. That means anybody can show up. And there's closed groups where only alcoholics could go to. So, what happens is, say, for example, like my group, (coughs) I can come in, I can say what the hell I want. They let me share it. I can say whatever the hell I want. And sometimes if it's not exactly kosher or in line with it, then the guy who moderated the group, he said, I don't run things, but he actually does run it. He will come in and he will say something to kind of divert that into everybody's way of thinking. To the AA way of thinking. Now, my experience in AA, I've been to a whole variety of different groups. And as a whole, I think AA does help certain people. If you have, if you actually have a problem, if you're actually an alcoholic and have a problem, this program will help you. If you're not an alcoholic, then this program is not going to really help you. The problem is, is that <clears throat> you have to f- try to work on certain things to see if it works or not. Now, I'll tell you the truth, like I said, I don't believe in a higher power that can stop me from drinking. I brought that to I brought that information to another person once and they said to me, Oh, you need a higher power. I said, Well, I said, What? Who's your higher power? Well, my higher power is God. Okay. I said, Well, since you believe in God so much, how come God didn't stop you from getting a DUI? Whoa. How come God doesn't keep you sober? Whoa. You forget. You had to keep yourself sober. You had to work at keeping yourself sober. This is just a helping hand to keep you sober, in my opinion. So, right then, it blows some people's minds. It's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, <clears throat> number one, during my probation, I was sober. Why? Because I wasn't an alcoholic. I didn't crave alcohol or anything like that. So, it, it technically, did the program really work for me? No. I was keeping sober on my own willpower. My own willpower. Hmm. Interesting. But now, here's the thing. Uh, 
in actuality, do I still drink? Yes, I do enjoy occasional beer every now and then. I just don't drink to get drunk like I used to. Before, whenever I drink, I wanted to get drunk. Now I don't. I just drink for the enjoyment of it. For example, last night I went out to dinner with a friend and I had two beers. And I was fine. Because I wanted two beers. Simple as that. I wanted some beer. The old me would have kept drinking and drinking and drinking and drinking and drinking. Me, I just like, now? I'm like, eh. So, did this program help me? It kind of did. Do I believe in it 100%? The answer is no. I personally believe that you have the power to stop yourself from drinking and to keep yourself from drinking because it's you who have to do the work. For example, <clears throat> one thing is I work out. I go to the gym, I work out. Here's the thing. See see this? Now I'm not doing this for I'm not doing this to show off how muscular I am. I'm just showing you this is what happens. Because I actually went to the gym and I worked to get that. I lifted weights to get that. I did some nutrition to get these muscles. I didn't just sit back and say, hey, higher power, give me muscles, and boom, it did happen. It's not like He-Man where you say, I have the power, and then just boom, you just have He-Man. I actually had to work at it. And that's the same thing I use as an example. I say, you know what? You can believe in a higher power, that's fine. But here's a question. You have to actually work. It's like a job for you. This is a job. Your job is to keep yourself sober. You have to try to keep yourself sober. Do I really need AA to keep myself sober? No. This helps give me a boost. It just gives me a boost, and that's it. Do I still go to AA? Yeah, I do. Because the group I go to is very fun. And then when I get tired of it, I stay gone for two or three months. Then I come back. Then if I don't like, you know, if I don't like the people in it or something I don't like, then I go away for a couple months and I come back. So, some people I know hate the idea of AA, and you know, and the reason why because they they ended up with a shitty ass group. And there's some people who had a really cool ass group, and they kind of like it, just like the people you hang around with. If you hang around with positive people, you can be positive, even though you're the negative Nancy. If you hang around, you know, like, for example, recently I've been hanging around a whole bunch of nasty-ass bombs and shit. So, guess what? My attitude was negative. <laughs> and I ended up with a whole bunch of drama. Because I was hanging out with negative-ass people. That makes sense, right? Hmm. Hmm. But, in a sense, do I believe AA is good? It can be. Do I think it should be? Do I think... It, people really need it the answer is only certain cases need this because substance abuse counseling is almost the exact same thing except for you have to pay for it this is free i can go in there take you for one month in one month I only donated five bucks <laughs> i only did i only gave them five bucks for a month and i drank coffee okay that's fine but then again, I help clean up and all this other stuff. And plus, like the people I hang out, put people there are actually pretty cool. So I'm not too bad about that. And the thing is, they know I'm not an alcoholic and they know I do drink. But they don't say shit because they can't. <laughs> some people, some groups will be shitty towards you and they be, they're very militant and they try to guilt you into all this other shit. And then those are the ones that give AA a bad name. And there's a lot more of those than the actually good ones. <clears throat> so bottom line, I think AA is a good program if you really need it. If you really need it, it's a good program. But if you don't really need it, it's just like a booster. Okay, and those are my thoughts about AA. Now, like I said, you know, these are my thoughts. And true, I do go just because it's fun for me. And plus, it gets me out of the house a little bit. 
But then again, a lot of times after after I go to AA, I'm hitting the bar <laughs> and get a couple of drinks a lot of times. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's funny. And I'm like, okay. And a lot of times I'll say, you know what? I still drink every now and then when I feel like it. Oh, by the way, they got these slogans. Easy does it. One day at a time. I can drink if I want to. Okay. Those slogans help keep you honest in this program. Helps you say, okay, this is a very simple program. Well, how simple is it is if you don't believe in a higher power? Because a lot of this really revolves around a higher power concept. Oh, my God. So, I mean, so I'm like, one time I said, you know what? Well, hell, higher power could be this group. Higher power could be this book. Higher power could be Mike Tyson for all I care. <laughs> High power could be this chair I'm sitting in, or the bed I lay in, or the underwear I'm wearing. That's my higher power, you know. As long as I believe in it, that's fine. Who could say? And it also could change. But, like I said, some people don't like it because they end up with shitty groups. And they try to teach you shitty ways. This group I'm in, it works very well. They were very respectful. They might not like everything you say, but it's very respectful. But, like I said, this is it. So, you know, that's my viewpoint on AA. Do I suggest AA for everybody? The answer is no. Only if you think you need it. And there's some people who don't. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Talk to you later.